Hey everybody, I'm Josh Gomez and welcome to part number three today for the Australian Grand Prix. Now, if you remember from last episode, we had an absolutely abysmal race. Um, basically, it was before the patch and uh, we had that wet tyre glitch. Where uh, you went, well, first of all, at the start of the race, you weren't allowed to switch over to the intermediates. And, um, and, you know, <laughs> when you did switch over to the intermediates, it, the, your tyre attempts would go through the roof. But, we're going to hopefully look forward uh, for today and uh, and see what we can do. Now this, is, now, this race is after the patch, and as you can see, we are Stone Cold Steve Austin dead last in the vehicle performance. Um, we do have a uh, a few a fair few upgrades coming, so not too bad. And there's I actually, I actually had a look, and there's no upgrades that we can actually purchase at this time. Although in one day we can purchase another reliability upgrade, which isn't the worst, but not really something that we want to do at this moment, especially because we need performance. But time to select our goals for this race. Uh, we're going to go drive 90 miles during the race we we weekend, which sounds about sounds not easy to be fair. Uh, for the wind tunnel, we are going to achieve um, any session with the fastest lap. I believe that's what, yeah, that's what we chose. Lovely Joffley. I know my own video. Uh, for the uh, material, for the chassis side even, we are um, going to go. These are both very, very easy uh, tasks to do. But, yeah, we're going to go complete 10 laps during a race weekend. We should should be able to easily do that. Be a little bit concerned if we uh, if we can't. But for the strategy, we are once again going to go with the perfect one practice program uh, because I am a genius. Right. Okay. All the new parts have been fabricated. Here we go. All the new parts. It's just one reliability upgrade. But yeah, we're able to uh, purchase another reliability upgrade or are we going to think we're actually going to save out oh, never mind we are going to get an ICE uh, durability upgrade going so you know we may not have a fast car but at least it's going to be reliable as we finally now go to the first lap of qualifying uh, really really late on the brakes there I found during uh, throughout this weekend, our car was actually feeling very good. Um, we were actually able to like break really late into uh, into some of these corners. Um, so yeah, and the new handling does seem a lot smoother. Um, it's a lot more planted on the ground, which I really like. Um, so yeah, by ending this, uh, this lap now, we're going to come across the line, and it is P5, currently, uh, with a 118.3, and as the, uh, the session falls here, we end up in P7, and, uh, and Bottas all the way down in P18, which I think is where we actually should have ended up in. So throughout the uh, the weekend, we'll uh, we'll see if we need to increase our uh, AI difficulty. But um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens as we start our Q2 lap now. Um, can we make it into the top ten? Let's find out, really. DRS open, a little bit of uh, overtake there probably. Lay on the brakes, nice turn in. And uh, yeah, overall very smooth uh, few sections of corner as we fade away to the end of the lap. What's it going to be? 
And it's the story of Battle of Mora because we are in P1 currently. Good lord, was it 18.1? A very decent lap as Russell. Never mind, Verstappen goes into P1. But we finish Q2 in P8. We actually make it to Q3 for the second time. Because obviously, I think we would have actually made it into Q3. Uh, last episode if uh, Piastri didn't hold us up, but that is all fine, but yeah, a very, very good qualifying session overall, and you can see him in noticing, um, if we were like five hundredths of a second, like slower, we would have been knocked out, so it just shows like really how close it is already, um, but yeah, as we start our one and only Q3 lap. Usually, Australia is not a great track for me. I usually don't do uh, well around here, especially during the qualifying. But, apparently, we are doing very well so far. But, yeah, we're going to see how the... Uh, how the Grand Prix goes, and we'll see if we need to increase the AI difficulty, even just by like one tick. Every little helps. As we come across the line in P5, and uh, there we go, we end up in P8. There we go, thank you, mate. We finish Q3 in P8, but Max Verstappen is on pole position. Sergio Perez in P2, Fernando Alonso doing really, really well, dragging the Aston Martin up into P3, but yeah, now ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the race. It is one of the great Formula One Grand Prix of the entire year. Over 400,000 Australian fans here across the weekend. The roar of the crowd means one thing, it's race day in Melbourne. We're in the great state of Victoria. Now 14 corners and 3.28 miles for the drivers to navigate. Five to the left and nine to the right. The track has been remodeled to encourage more overtaking. Let's hope we get loads of it today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Fernando Alonso, Norris, Leclerc, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Williams, Russell, Hamilton, Stroll, Sonoda, Gasly, Ricardo, Albon, Ocon, Magnussen, Bottas, Hulkenberg, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. So here we are then, starting our formation lap. And, um, okay, so yeah, I'm actually really excited sure for this race. Um, because obviously it's the first race with the new, well, updated handling. So, uh, yeah. We, uh, have to see. How great we are going to do. I don't know what to say during this little bit. But, clearly, I wanted to say something during editing because I left this in. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Very, very cool. Indeed. Thankfully, there's not going to be any rain today. So, we are staying well clear of... Uh, any interesting strategies for today. Um, but, yeah, I thought I'd fade away. Oh, I did fade away. Fade away right there. But, yeah. Lovely, jovely, lining up on the grid, but okay, we just about, about 10 centimetres overcook it, so uh, okay, we're starting so a little bit further back. But, as we now go to five red lights for the Australian Grand Prix 
in season one. It's lights out and we go racing. As uh, we get quite an average start, because obviously we were a little bit further back. Not really sure where to go, but we uh, settle for around the outside of Lando Norris. Um, a cheeky, cheeky position into the first corner. Love the job, Lee. Sound as a pound as Piastri now tries to make his way past Carlos Sainz. Still side by side as we make a very opportunistic move down the inside of Piastri. A very uh, unorthodox overtaking position or spot, but we make it work. Love the job, Lee. Sound as a pound. And now we set our sights on to Carlos Sainz. There's, uh, he is building up the speed. Uh, one thing that is quite clear during this Grand Prix is that we've actually got quite good top end speed. It's just like sort of our like aerodynamics is lacking a little bit. As uh, we thought about sending it down the inside, but we were a little bit too far back to uh, make anything happen. But. Lap number two, DRS activated, a little bit of overtake. Um, just trying to catch back up because we did lose a little bit of time in sector one. But we get a second bite of the cherry now. Once again, DRS. And uh, we go to the right, go to the left. A little bit early on the break. Tried to want, I wanted to uh, get a little bit of a switch back going, but not quite making it, uh, making it happen. As uh, try to line ourselves up, we lose a lot of time uh, during that second, that last corner. As uh, yeah, unable to make any move for the time being. As we actually need to set our sights behind us because Piastri is going to send it down the inside. Um, I tried to remain side by side with him, but he, uh, he was just a little bit too far ahead, really. So, uh, I've got on yeah. Oh. Albon has got an issue with their car. It was uh, very unfortunate. As uh, we've got overtake flowing now, DRS open. We are gaining on Piastri, but we are not close enough. We have to wait until the second DRS zone. Are we able to make anything happen into this break zone? And the answer is no. <laughs> we were too far back. Um, and, uh, yeah, just too far back, really. Go back down to medium ERS, because we have used quite a lot of ERS in these opening laps. And, uh, yeah, we do need to save a little bit. As uh, Norris has uh, a little look down the inside. Oh, what has gone on up ahead? Is that Red Bull? Someone is off the track. And, uh, no idea what happened. There's a massive puff of smoke there. What on earth happened? <laughs> and it was Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen actually double locks into the first corner. And he just sent one. You can see us flying by there, but not a uh, not an ideal situation for this happened to be him. But we gain an extra place, so I am happy. <laughs> um, yeah, trying to we're actually we're actually not going to have DRS now. We are a little bit too outside of the zone. So we are susceptible for a Lando Norris attack, but yeah, as always, we see up ahead Piastri making a move around the outside into that chicane. A very, uh, very risky move indeed, but ended uh, ended well, paid off well. Um, which that actually slows them both down enough to get us back into the DRS zone. So we will be having DRS on to lap number five. To the Nas. Very nice indeed. But Norris is right there. Lap number five now, a little bit later on. Um, I think Norris actually locked up during the uh, the bit that we cut out there. 
So both Mercedes are through, and we are under an immediate attack from George Russell, and soon to be the Hamilton. Um, so yeah, it seems like now we are not setting our sights forward, but instead send them backwards. As uh, we have an objective to overtake science before lap 10, but I really don't think it's going to happen, in all honesty. Especially because George Russell is making a move down into turn 1, but we go and lay on the brake, swoop it round, and he is unable to make a move. However, he is able to make a move down into the second corner, or technically the third corner, if you think about it. But sticking his nose in, and we, uh, we go side by side, but managing to keep the position. But for how much longer? Because he is going to have DRS down this uh, section of the track. I was going to call it straight, but it's really not straight, is it? Um, but yeah, we actually stick to the outside racing line. George Russell sends it down the inside, we swoop round, and, um, and yeah, slow him down enough where he is not going to be able to make a move into the third, one, two, three, fourth to last corner. Um, so lucky days. As we now go to lap number seven, George Russell swings around the outside, but we keep our foot in. Um, Hamilton goes to the left of us, Russell to the right. We are in a Mercedes sandwich, nowhere to go, so we uh, go deep on purpose. Try to not make any contact there. We are very, very lucky to not pick up any damage, but we are remaining ahead, which is a lovely, lovely thing. Um, so yeah, back on the onboard now. We go defensive, Ru uh, Hamilton this is now, actually. Um, try to send him around the inside, but we squeeze his line. He's got a very, very tight line into turn one, but we swing around the outside once again. Uh, but he will have another bite here on lap number nine at the end of this lap. What happens? Oh, he actually, he actually locks up. He locks up a little bit. He doesn't go fully off track, but he does lose the position to George Russell, who is now up in the 2P7. Because uh, obviously we are currently in P6. So if we can finish the Grand Prix like this, we'll be happy days indeed, as we actually go defensive. But, yeah, given enough room, Russell actually backs out there. But, for how much longer? Because he now sends it down the inside. Of the third corner, little bit of, a little bit of will bash in blast fine, and George Russell makes the position up into P6. We are down into P7. Hamilton behind us, as well as uh, Norris behind him. But we will have DRS, ve DRS, very, very crucially there, and uh, yeah, we are gaining. We are gaining, we're going to go round the outside, lay on the brake, swoop it round, and uh, no contact made, a very smooth overtake indeed. But, lab number 12, Russell says it down the inside, once again, this time however, we managed to uh, actually stay side by side. Uh, until the next corner, where we uh, run out of room. But once again, we will have DRS. And, uh, yeah, what I noticed is that the Mercedes top end speed isn't great. As you see here, as we get to the, uh, the higher speeds, uh, they really sort of slow down compared to us. But, we managed to make the uh, the move once again around the outside. Uh, Hamilton almost losing a spot there. Lamb number 13. We are the ones that go to go defensive this time. But, 
Russell um, backs out of that move. But he is going to go down the inside once again. We're going to try and stick around the outside. I've got a uh, uh, outboard here <laughs> of the camera angle. But we go deep into the corner on purpose. We force him wide because we are into the pits on lap number 13 now. Into the pits. Norris joins us. Uh, I think Hamilton joins us as well. Into the pits. We are going to put on a, uh, a set of hard compound tyres. But look at the front left tyre. We struggle to put that on. And we actually get jumped by Yuki Sonoda. Unfortunately, we come out of the pits and... Oh my, no one's going... <laughs> Bottas, his engine is on fire. Is he, uh... Oh, no. <laughs> he just rears into view. With a, uh, a smoky engine. But yes, as we get confirmation there, Valtteri Bottas is out of the Australian Grand Prix. We are the only remaining kick salber left on track. So, hopefully... We can actually get some points here um, to even uh, just uh, mitigate the uh, the DNF from Bossas. But yeah, I didn't actually know at the time that we got jumped by Sonoda. But yeah, as we uh, easily jump Russell, we actually make up even with uh, that pit stop error again held up slightly. We still make up a little bit of time, which is uh, very good indeed. But yeah, as I was saying, currently uh, didn't know that Sonoda had uh, already pit. As we get objective four, lead, do not leave the track, but we immediately failed. <laughs> oh my god. We leave the track like one pixel, and we immediately fail. That objective, which I find absolutely hilarious. And yes, Russ, uh, Norris actually jumps us as well. Three seconds ahead, so we lost. We actually lost a fair bit of time in the pants, which isn't ideal. As we uh, got DRS now on Sonoda, and uh, we lay on the brakes and we sail around to the outside to hopefully secure that position. Okay, but yeah, it was around now where I was getting a little, little bit cautious and a little bit suspicious that Sonoda has actually already picked because he is battling us like uh, like his career depends on it. Because we do the battle, we actually set the fastest lap of the race and uh, a very very decent lap to be fair. Didn't feel like the fastest lap worthy, but, you know, we've got a fast lap, so, uh, who can complain as an order? Once this moves back, and, uh, he actually, he actually makes it work, down into turn one. Max Verstappen sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, but only by one tenth. We are one tenth of Max Verstappen, basically. Which is uh, an, insane, an insane thing to say. Uh, especially because we're in a kick salvo. Dead last in the vehicle performance. But. Yeah, trying to set ourselves up now for the DRS. Little bit of. I don't think we're actually going to use overtake. Oh, excuse me. But DRS open now. We are gaining. We are gaining. And we go around the out. No, we don't. We tried to go around the outside, but we. Uh, we use a lot of momentum pulling out there. But we get a single bite of the cherry. We have DRS. Sonoda squeezes us. We are, we are late on the brinks. And we sail it round the outside. There we go. Another jubbly sound as a pound. <laughs> um. Yeah, lab number 21 this is. Um, Sonoda finally makes another move. But he backs out. 
Backs out quite a lot there, actually. And uh, invites Russell to make a move. Which I don't think he does. He doesn't. Um, lap 24. Sonoda catches up, as well as Russell. We go defensive. Um, but ultimately still giving room. Because we are a very good driver. <laughs> um... Yeah, so no, don't want to get back so like we did on uh, on Russell okay, when Russell was on our inside. But yeah, Russell and Sonoda now in the DRS of us. And so I do have my first you on as as Russell. Hold on, let's go side by side with Sonoda. Try to make a move with us, but I'm not making it work. As Russell actually secures that spot, but now he's not—he's not done. He wants us. He sends it down the inside. We do what we do usually, and uh, so around the inside, we're still side by side. This is the exact remnants of our uh, of our pit stop, but instead of going deep, we do leave him room, and um, yeah, DRS open. Now we go to the right. We go to the left. A very classic move indeed. Force Russell to have a tighter line. And we sail on round the outside. DRS open to assist us in escaping. Uh, but it didn't help us. <laughs> As we go defensive, Russell with the DRS. He goes uh, along our side. And we actually make. The side by side work. We're a little bit more ahead though from the last time. So we don't need to flirt with the track limits. As we bang tyres then. Try to get a, uh, a switch back, but Russell slowing his car down and positioning it really well to, to, uh, to stop that. But yeah, we will now get DRS. A little bit of a uh, little bit of hot lap and overtake, just to gain back some of that time that we have lost. Um, but if you guys look, top left of your screen is on the leaderboard. Verstappen, 1.8 seconds behind us. He is absolutely charging through the field, and. Uh, and yeah, he is going to catch up to us very, very quickly as we go a little bit too deep there for uh, into that very fast right-hander. Russell, thankfully, not losing it at that corner this time. But um, yeah, catching up to Russell, we will have the second bite of DRS. Where do we go? We go to the right, and we go to the left. Let's go really late on the brakes, and sail it round to the inside. We force Russell to take a very tight line there, because I'm just done doing like, this um, hokey pokey turn around, because that's what it's all about. So, uh, yeah, we force him to concede the position. And, uh, and yeah, there we go. Verstappen, five tenths behind. Oh, this is very scary. Very, very scary. Indeed. As, uh, thankfully, for, for at least one corner, we don't need to defend. So we can keep it nice and clean. Try and go as fast as we can. And, um, yeah. There we go, getting a very powerful launch off that corner. Surprised Russell didn't lose it. Um, maybe I break checked him, who knows. <laughs> uh, but as, yeah, I look behind, I just, this is where I realised that Verstappen's actually really close. Verstappen making a move on Russell, but he is not done. He's got DRS on us. We go defensive, he goes lay on the brakes, round the outside, and we force him. Very, very wide off track. We make contact. Our floor is damaged, but we make even more contact. And 
we uh, we collect them, and we both essentially lose our wing. And oh god, oh no! We were in the points. There's a replay here, as you can, you can see the the um, the sheer speed of the Stappen. And um, oh god, yeah, this is our fault here. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh god, what horrible, horrible contact to be made there. Yeah, it was our fault. Um shouldn't have forced him wide, honestly, but yeah, that second piece of contact, I thought he would have uh, backed out in all honesty. Um but he didn't. So uh Yeah, but it just goes to show that we are still a rookie overall. Um at the end of the day in F1, these, uh, this type of aggression is, uh, sort of to be expected, really, as we actually fail to get the front wing on, <laughs> really just rubs salt into the wound, doesn't it? Um, oh, God, we were in, oh, we were in the points, I'm very, I was very, very disappointed in myself, in all honesty. Um, but yeah, final lap, we are in last place, as Sergio Perez wins the Australian Grand Prix, and I'm sure he would be loving that in real life, but we are last, we are very, very last indeed, but, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say, it is my fault that both sets of contact was made. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. We should have given gave him room, but as our engine actually starts overheating there. But, yeah, there we go, the final last corners of the Grand Prix we are going to very slowly cross the line and finish P18 right, <sighs> what a horrible race these last two races have been absolutely atrocious we were in the points, we were set to get points as well, but annoyingly, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> we need to move on, we have to hope that next race will be better, and we will try our very, very best on to not make contact. But, yeah, as I said, it is our rookie season. These things are going to happen. So, yeah, we just need to learn to uh, to make sure not to happen. As it is a 1, is a 2, 3, 4, the Ferraris of Science and the Clur. And this contact act technically helps us out with Ferrari. Because our goal is to end up in a left Ferrari. Um... So, maybe this has won favours with Ferrari. Uh, taking out Verstappen. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, as Ferrari are in the constructor standing. Actually, take the lead of the constructor standings, I'm pretty sure. And Charles Leclerc is in P1, 20 points ahead of Perez. Could Science actually win the driver standings? Who knows? Who knows indeed? As we uh, check our ratings at the, uh, the end of this race, somehow our pace going down, even though we were one tenth off the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Um, 56, 54% split. And, uh, but yeah, that's all for today. If you guys enjoyed, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, all that stuff. But I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.